I am Inga Larissa. And I am Jennifer Rose. We are two whiskey pals serving a weekly whiskey podcast and rocking your whiskey world. Exploring the whiskies and distilleries of the world and meeting amazing people along the way. We'll be sticking our noses into our jams and all things whiskey. So fill your whiskey glass and join the fun. A warm whiskey sister's welcome. Hello, whiskey friends. A few weeks ago, we finally paid a visit to Glen Scotia Distillery. So today we will be sampling some special whiskies from them. Yes, we've been talking a good game for a while, haven't we? So it was super exciting to eventually go. But first, as always, let's find out what's been happening in the whiskey world and stick our noses into the whiskey news. Stick your nose in it. This year marks the 100 year anniversary of whiskey making in Japan since the founding of market leader Suntory's first distillery in Yamazaki in 1923. And at the century mark, there are now more than 100 licensed distilleries in the country, twice as much as 10 years ago, with each one vying to make its mark in a rapidly expanding market. The Cedar Fire, which Shizuka claims is the world's only wood fueled blaze beneath a whiskey still is one of several novelties these distilleries are using to set themselves apart. So bad news for the peat lovers. This is the end of Octomar as Pruladi has announced that Octomar 14.4 is the final single malt in Pruladi distillery's heavily peated collection. Ooh. First released in 2008, Octomar single malts are matured for five years, bottled close to cask strength and always super duper heavily peated. Has there been rumours of this or is this out the blue? For me this was out of the blue but I haven't heard anything. I literally just saw it today. I just wondered if people will start like trying to stockpile or you know if it's a dying breed. Yeah, it's, I was quite surprised. This one is distilled from 100% Scottish mainland Concerto Barley. Octomore 14 Point four is smalted to 106 ppm. Pretty peaty that one. Although I think the ones that we tried in the episode on the f- in first season were even were higher. Yeah, I think so. Um, and this one is bottled 59.2% ABV. It is the Isla Distillery's first expression matured exclusively in Colombian virgin oak casks. The cask structure is said to be similar to the French oak, releasing a sweet vanilla and caramel flavour. The casks were toasted at different levels, ranging from light and medium toasting to intensely high charring before they were brought together. So it's peaty and also probably super duper smoky anyway. I don't know why because I'm not a peat freak but I'm a bit sad about that because I think it's quite a well-loved dram. It is. They are always quite pricey though. Like Mm. I've always, it's been a dream to get a bottle but I always just find them quite pricey. Yeah. Yeah and then like some of them are really amazing especially if they have that sweeter elements and peat but I just always worry that what if they just are too much and hit you in the face yeah. and then you spend all the top dollars. It would be interesting if anybody's got the lowdown or any gossip to let us know what their thoughts are on Octomore No More. Ireland will enforce a ban on advertising alcohol on television before 9pm which will be implemented on the 10th of January 2025. The aim is to reduce the amount of alcohol related content children see on tv the restrictions will also apply to irish radio from midnight to 10 a.m and then 3 p.m to midnight a 2020 report from the broadcasting authority of ireland revealed at least 50,000 minors in the country start to drink alcohol every year and also claimed diageo was the number four advertiser to children aged four to 17 I don't get that. Well, that, that's the thing in Finland, you know, you're not allowed to, uh, um, I don't think you can advertise any alcohol at any point whatsoever. Yeah. Because I remember one point they had like beer adverts and you couldn't even have that sound of opening like, Shh. yeah, it's just, I don't know, like this kids really, like teenagers maybe get it, but like. I don't know. I'm conflicted. I think you've got to take issues of alcohol misuse, um, you know, super seriously and health of a nation super seriously. But I also think nanny states and just like, oh, too much. Maybe because I was brought up and just everything was advertised and everywhere. But maybe we'd see, well, look what happened to you sipping <laughs> away on the whiskey constantly. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I just sometimes think, oh, boo hiss. Let people mm. make their choices. 
I guess if it's, you know, to help kids and stuff. No, I do think Boo has to think ridiculous. <laughs> the Our Whiskey Foundation has released a festive themed series of photos on its free to use image library, which aims to tackle gender bias in the whiskey industry. The library is called Modern Face of Whiskey, which I'm pretty sure we mentioned this before, but now they've been adding all these Christmassy festive pictures, which actually I used as well for my uh, Women's Whiskey Club. Oh, very good. Mm-hmm. Images that show women and people of all ages and races enjoying whiskey, a contrast to the outdated masculine stereotypes often associated with the spirit. And the library has a packing of 13 whiskey producers and drinks groups, including Glen Fiddich, Bacardi, Beam Santory, Distill Ventures, the Glen Livet, Brown Foreman, White McKee, Glen Moranchi, Diageo, Heaven Hill, Edrington, Compass Box, and Glen Tarrett. So go and use them, people. Spread the joy. Whiskey Sisters on Tour. So as we mentioned, this episode is all about Glen Scotia and we actually featured Glen Scotia Distillery back in episode 58 for those of you that haven't already listened to it when the super amazing Neil Ridley joined us to chat about the distillery and all things Campbelltown Funk. Yeah, so if you've not listened to it yet, why not get your pause on that episode and see what you think if you're interested in this one. I can't believe it's already, that was back in 58 because we're now on what 67 time warp inca time warp what yeah so in that episode we sampled the double cask rum finish and this year's campbelltown festival release and today we are sampling double cask not the rum one but the other one and two releases from the Dunwich warehouse and in case you missed our whiskey fact about the Dunwich warehouses they are basically traditional style of warehouses fairly small with lower ceilings slate roof and stone walls and Dunwich tends to have more humidity due to the type of flooring used that also results in slower maturation and at Glen Scotia they have capacity to store 7,500 casks in the dunnage. And their dunnage at Glen Scotia, it didn't seem to have a particularly low ceiling. It almost seemed kind of expansive and cathedral-like. And- yeah, and they had those, there was like loads of gaps on the wall, wasn't it? Yes, that, um, for ventilation. But I think anyway with dunnages, they normally just rack them up to three, like only do three levels. So even if they had higher ceiling, they didn't have anything high. Now, are we going to break cover on what happened in the dunnage? Dunnage or what happens in the Dunnage stays in the Dunnage. What's the deal? <laughs> oh, you're talking about throwing whiskey on the floor. Enka. I know it was I yeah. It was only a few drops. Honestly, I couldn't like with the peated one, which we will I'll mention in a minute, but I just had to just throw it back in my throat rather than the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a morning tasting session in the Dunnage and Ian, who was very much looking after us, didn't want us to be too inebriated um, and to be falling around the town. So he suggested that we throw some of the whiskey just onto the floor before refilling our glasses to taste other ones. But we were almost crying doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was terrible. So bad for the angels. But we're lucky we made it all together because a lot of people told us they thought our flight would be cancelled that day didn't they yeah oh my god (laughs) i did see that the weather forecast looked really bad the night before but i was just hoping that we can still make it even if i knew it's gonna be a risky business but honestly it was kind of crazy the airport in Glasgow, but it's a very tiny plane by Logan Air and it was super windy when we got on board. So we did share some stories on our Instagram that day, but we'll make a wee reel and send it because there's some footage of Inc and I looking, I would say, somewhat brave as the plane hurtles through the sky. But yeah, I thought it was kind of rock and roll, but I did feel a wee bit queasy towards the end. Yeah, same. My nose was getting all sweaty and I was grabbing your arm. (laughs) I think it's so quick though 
and so amazingly handy from Glasgow and it's kind of exciting to be flying somewhere so close I would definitely make the trip again would you? Yeah definitely because the return flight was actually really steady and super easy and it was pretty you could see all the twinkly lights maybe we'll take the flight for the festival next year. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So we were met in Glasgow airport by the lovely Andy and he accompanied us all the way didn't we? We were super spoiled Inca from start to finish weren't we? I know it was nice he came all the way from Edinburgh to Glasgow airport to meet us and fly with us and take us to the distillery and then to the pub and all that. Poor him if he thought if, he, if we weren't his cup of tea but we had a great time anyway. <laughs> Yeah, luckily the weather actually even changed. As soon as we got to the distillery, pretty much, the weather just got way better. And we were met by Ian, the master distiller, who was good fun. And he gave us a very in-depth tour of the distillery and all the little details and how to make it and everything else. And the ghost. With a lovely lilting Campbelltown brogue. He had a lovely yes. accent, didn't he? And super passionate about where he's from and the entire landscape and history and stuff that really came through didn't it it was really nice to do the tour with him for sure i felt like it felt very detailed but also personal and we weren't long there it was kind of breakfast time when we got tour into the new make which was delicious yeah, so we've been talking about new makes before. And if you haven't listened to our episode about new makes before, go and check it out. I think it was quite different to most new makes that I've tried. A lot of new makes tend to be quite fruity and quite, um, I don't know, like softer, sweeter. And this one was, I would say, almost salty, savory fruitiness as well. But it was very sippable. It felt quite like complete within itself somehow. It was, it was very sippable. Again, Ian was like, don't drink it all. But I was like, I want to. <laughs> and then he was just taking the glass off. <laughs> but it was really, I enjoyed it. And I always like trying the new makes because it does help you to understand the, the whiskies and the DNA of the distillery. He was saying as well, like, yeah, there's definitely some sort of saltiness in there, which is kind of weird because it's not really supposed to be there. New make is not supposed mm. to be salty. But there's something there. Yeah, Campbell done magic. See, before we go any further, I'm distracted by your appearance, Inca. Why? Do you know who you're the double of today? <gasps> what? Who? Daphne out of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's in my, my grey polonic dress. I don't know. Because in this light, you're, it looks kind of like a lilac polonic. And your red hair. And I'm just like, check out Daphne here. Oh, I do like Scooby-Doo. Yeah, me too. So back to Glen Scotia. So basically, because we were talking about the new make, I thought it would be a good idea to just to go through some parts of the process on how they actually make their spirit. So they use a small batch process, which involves the malted barley first being placed in the mash tun, where two consecutive waters are added instead of customary three, which happens over eight hours. And the first water is added at 66 degrees and the second one at 72. And then fermentation, I'm pretty sure Ian said 132 hours. How do you feel about that number? I think that was about right. I believe that it can sometimes go up to 140 as well. Well, it's very high, which is funny because you would think that the new make would be even like fruitier than it was. But mm -hmm. anyway, the first stage of distillation lasts for around nine hours. And the distillery has two very cute, chunky stills, one wash still and one spirit still. And the pot stills have an onion shape with a very wide and short neck, which promotes a lot of reflux in the spirit. And the reflux basically refers to the spirit that condenses into the neck of the spirit still and then falls back into the pot still to be redistilled. And the line arm on the on the stills is almost horizontal and the average distillation runs vary from nine to over 10 hours. And the hard cut runs from 71% ABV to about 63, producing an average ABV of 69%. And the new make spirit is then diluted down to 63.5% ABV before it goes into the casks. And we witnessed um, the highly skilled 
still men doing their funky thing. It's not, you know, electronically run and they're they're working their magic, aren't they? Yeah, they're still, exactly. I quite like that it was so cute and traditional and small and everything is really, you turn this valve and then you have to do that and then you do yeah. this and it's very, <laughs> very hands on. So that's kind of nice. And the stills looked kind of like fairy tale mushroom houses with little chimney pots on them. One of our followers, one of our listeners um, actually contacted us because we were, as I said earlier, posting stories showing off that we were in Campbelltown. And he asked us to find out about their peat levels because he hadn't been able to come across that before. And Ian said they're lightly peated is usually 10 to 13 ppm, medium peat 20 to 23 ppm and heavily peated in the low 30s. I think even the heavily peated is obviously not that heavily peated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the whiskies we tried in the Dunwich were amazing mm, so good so i scribbled down a few notes 2013 first fill bourbon cask cask number nine was the first one which was yummy and mm. sweet and of course it was a bit cold in the morning and stuff so you had to kind of warm it and a little bit in your hands the glass and all that but it was really tasty i think that added to the atmosphere and the somewhat cathedral like majesty of the moment you know the cold yeah. breath I yeah. know. Yeah, it was lovely. And then the next one was the Sexy Sexy 2016 Heavily Peated ex bourbon Cask number 1631. That was amazing. Ooh. That was when you posted a picture of me in my happy place because I was just oh, literally in heaven. And did you not finish Andy's sample as well? Yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> say. I was just like salivating over the sample. I was like, mm, don't want to finish it. And then Andy was like, oh, but you know, I need, I still need to drive home. So you can finish my sample. I'm like, yeah, yes, please. Yes, in your defense, you didn't steal it out of his hand. Although I do think you were considering it. I was eyeing it, yeah. I was for going sure. for it. <laughs> like, don't throw it on the floor. Don't you dare. And then Ian said we could pick what was next. And we got a shot at extracting the spirit from the casks. Which oh, was yeah, cool. we both took our turn. Yeah, that was fun. I was a bit nervous, like, oh, my God, I'm going to spill it everywhere. Because it's, yeah. th it's pressure. We'll make a wee reel and post our, our dram extraction skills. Yes. So this one was a funky one, wasn't it? Um, 2019 re-racked Varena Bordeaux red wine cigar cask, meaning I actually was trying to find the exact size of the cigar cask, but it just means it's smaller. I couldn't find the size, but it's a little bit, I think it's still a little bit bigger than the bourbon cask because the peated bourbon was next to it and that was smaller. Oh, and was it? Maybe it's a, even a little bit kind of longer. It's like a funky, slightly funky shape. That whiskey was divine oh so good oh so, so good. good i thought i was mm -hmm. spoiled with the heavily peated but this border was also amazeballs it it just it just brought life to the party so delicious beautiful kind of reddish brownish color i want to go back yeah, it was great. Ah, uh, and then we were lucky enough to go to Ard Shield Hotel. Those of you that have been there will know exactly what we're talking about. We were able to walk around because it stayed dry. What an epic whiskey bar they have got. There were literally hundreds and the staff were adorable. So nice. Totally looked after us and we got delicious food. Yes, Haggis bonbons and whiskey drams. That was perfection, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have over 700 bottles in the bar, uh, behind the bar and like in those rooms. But I'm pretty sure someone said that in the building, there's even way more. And I was, we stuck to Glen Scotia's, didn't we? Because of course we continue drinking whiskey whilst there, because it would have been really rude and crazy not to. And you didn't have any Inca because you're not a super sweet tooth. But when the offer of the homemade shortbread, um, I was diving into that and it was so like melt in the mouth, delicious um, to have with the whiskies as well. Oh, I could go that right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just talking about these whiskies and food and stuff, I'm like, oh. I want some whiskey with my dinner. I felt kind of like guilty, but in a smug way, because I just thought this is a Monday and I'm living my best whiskey life in Campbelltown, eating this food and chomping on this food and sipping on the whiskeys with my yeah. whiskey bestie. <laughs> yeah, boasted stories to annoy everyone else. Happy Monday. Sorry, not sorry. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was great experience. Just amazing. Definitely would need to go back and visit Springbank as well. And it was also just really nice to see like understand where all those distilleries back in the day used to be and they were always yeah. close by and all those old buildings and there's like one distillery old one was just behind Glen Scotia and now it's just like a bus depot or, or something yeah <laughs> yeah all the history the is, goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there in life to see isn't it we I'm not disappointed as such but we had no hint of ghost I didn't feel any fear just pretty much moderate excitement most of the time I was there Did yeah you get, you get any ghost vibes I didn't get any ghost vibes but Ian did manage to lose his ring so maybe the ghost took it <gasps> so he couldn't find it I messaged him afterwards if he found it and he said he didn't which is so sad so maybe the ghost just kind of see if you'd worn your Daphne from Scooby-Doo ensemble then you could have solved the crime <laughs> I know I probably <laughs> could have Dram on fire. Okay, so Glen Scotia Double Cask is a great introduction to the distillery, bottled at 46% ABV and priced reasonably around £40. Shocker, shocker. Matured in first fill bourbon barrels before being finished for 12 months in PX Sherry Casks. Golden colour, apricot-ish light apricot. It's so dark in here, it's like hard to see. Yeah, kind of gold-ish. Yeah. The nose. Oh, also, did you notice that it had quite slow legs? Like it really kind of stick to the glass and just slowly. Oh, yeah. It's lovely. Big that double kind of... dunting legs. Yeah. Big legs that could crack walnuts between them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Nose. Yum. Yum. Sticky toffee. You know, that kind of toffee or fudge or something that sticks to your teeth. Yep. Yeah, nice. Vanilla ice cream. Yum. Gelato. Some very ripe peaches and, you know, those kind of lint or whatever it's called, chocolates that has kind of salty or some sort of caramel, hard caramel bits on the top. Ah, okay. I'm just getting that kind of stuff. I'm, I very much concur with those notes. I've got like kind of soft toffee, like caramel toffees, maybe set honey on buttery bread. I did get a mildly sort of damp grass, very mildly fermented waft after nosing for a while. But I actually found myself zoning out with my nose in the glass. And I was like, oh, this what so one of my notes on the nose is daydreamy because it just put me in like quite a blissful place meditation on the nose yeah there's maybe I was just thinking like oh not too many like sherry notes but there's maybe some sort of uh, like almond you know like we've got almonds sometimes you put them on whatever you know cakes or something and chop them with a knife and they're kind of chunky but they yeah not flakes but like chunky wee chunky cubes that you would yeah. chop up and sprinkle so palette i was getting butterscotch nice some uh you know that supermarket apple juice that we mentioned one day it's kind of oh yeah yeah kind of brownie color proper peanut butter you know not that sweety shitey stuff um but the proper oily kind of non yes real nutty but that kind of oiliness that it's kind of you know it's not, you don't eat a spoonful, you just put it in smoothies or something. Also, herbal spices, like dried uh, uh, oregano. Oh, very nice. I got a brown bread with butter and that set honey again. And just vibes of a lovely, wholesome kitchen with sunshine coming in the window and having this nice, juicy, sweet breakfast. Then I was getting a melted toffee sauce, similar to what I was imagining when you were saying about your notes, you know, that kind of heavy steamed sponge pudding with like a melted toffee sauce mm. on it. Maybe a wee bit of a kind of cinnamon and ginger kick. There's definitely a little bit of a some sort of spicy, that kind of, it's a little bit of that oak influence in there. 
I think it's super just deliciously smooth. I think there's there's quite there's enough going on to keep you interested in it. I think at first, not so much now, I've had it in the glass longer, but at first I found it quite a, a punchy finish. And I was getting kind of poached pear. I know you'd said peaches earlier on. I hadn't really got fruitiness until the, the finish. But yeah, it was working for me, the double cask. Yeah, I had some oiliness in the finish or like that kind of caramel sweeties that leaves your top of your mouth a little bit, that kind of coating. Oh, like you know, in a not nice way or a nice way? No, it's kind of just nice kind of aftertaste of the caramel, but like some caramel sweets, like the Weathers Originals or whatever it's called, kind of slightly creamy, milky, oily top bit. Different to the double cask rum one that we tried yes. that was very floral and fragrant and we weren't blown away by that whereas I really will I personally much preferred this double cast to the to the rum finish yeah although I can see the rum one working really well for people who do like those kind of because sometimes you know when you have a fragrant fragrant or floral dram it's also very delicate and very yes light yeah when that wasn't that way it was quite still quite you know sweet and punchy and had much more to give so I can definitely recommend it to people who would like that style of drums it's just not what I personally enjoyed but yeah good value good value for sure for good, sure like entry level nice someone getting into whiskey the first time be quite nice I think I would fancy it for a regular supper in the house yeah, exactly. That's a good one as well. Yeah, when you got guests over and you don't want to share all the expensive stuff, but you just want to have like a sharing dram. Mm, nice. Bottle that is always open and always available. Next one up is one of the Dunnage Drams Glen Scotia Refill First Fill Bourbon 1999 at 59% ABV. So this one's lighter in colour, isn't it? Much more light yellow. Yeah, yellow, kind of pale. And... Talking about sticking to glass. Mamma mia, honestly, pearl necklace action going on. There's like, it sticks to the glass like glue. Oh yeah, I hadn't really even noticed to be honest. It's just like slow, you know, you can spend time admiring all the little droplets that are slowly, slowly, slowly coming down. Love I'm it. getting a little bit more on the nose now, but to be fair, when I first nosed it, I got hardly a thing. So I'm quite curious to hear what you got. Oh, so I got instantly like panna cotta, cheesecake topped with tinned peaches uh, and those pink cherries, you know, those kind of like really proper tint. Mad stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and lots of real vanilla. I no, that's that's a yeah, and I'm kind of intrigued by that because I, as I say, didn't get much at all. And I was like, mm, I kind of get empty Tupperware that you've maybe had like some honey nut loops in, but they're finished. That's so funny. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, because this has been in the glass now, and I feel like all those sweet notes are gone. And that, as soon as you said the empty <laughs> Tupperware, I'm like, yes, it's like plastic <laughs> containers that you've had for a while. <laughs> And then maybe like sludgy wet grass. I was like, oh, I'm not getting much here. Yeah. Wow. It really changes. I think it was so sweet at the beginning. But yet yeah, it's, um, what is that? There's like a new kind of compost. Yeah. Something outdoorsy, something garden scentery. Yeah, definitely. And maybe like dirty willy boots. And I'm not getting any kind of like, bourbon bad boy usual vanilla custard type aromas on the nose nothing yeah, like that for me it was definitely at the beginning there's I think there's a little bit of like a distant hint of something what did and you also get? like a brown bread with butter someone on the background is eating brown bread with butter that's while I'm in my that's, welly boots <laughs> that's me in the last jam <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> palette let me just take another sip <laughs> On the initial sipping, I was getting, it's oaky and there's spice going on. You're still like trying to figure out a fruit salad, homemade fruit salad. Mm -hmm. Loads of different things going on there. A little bit of citrus, a little bit of apple, a little bit of peach, a little bit of banana. Some cinnamon. I was getting some dried thyme. I definitely got like some 
herbal Ooh. thing going on here. Mm. Um, sea salt. And again, there there is a little hint of caramel in there somewhere. What did you find it? I'm going back into taste again because I get none of that, I tell you. The citrus I got was lemon washing up liquid and like chili flakes. I can't go on with it at all. It's quite um, drying. There is definitely sweetness there. There's some caramel stuff, but it's feels spicier now that it's been in the glass. Or whether you just put the chili flakes in my head, but there's the. I'm thinking you get the sea salt. I'm just too overpowered by it. I find it super wersh and sour, and I'm like, oh, not for me. It is not as good as like the one that we tried in the Dunnage, the bourbon one was was amazing. delicious. It was yeah. delicious. But do you think maybe because this is 1999 that it's just past its bloody best? <laughs> Yeah, don't sugar coat it, Jennifer. Just say how you feel. <laughs> no, I'm a massive Glen Scotia fan, but no, you've got to just say it like you say what you see. Um, no, it's it maybe is completely suited to somebody else's palate. Just for me, it's it's not a gore. I um I just put two drops of water in it. <gasps> Let's see what happens. Um, <laughs> but by the way, so this basically these tasting uh, samples that we are tasting today is from a Dunwich tasting set which is available at the distillery or on their website and it's a great way to experience those special Glen Scotia releases from your own home you know if you can't make the distillery you can still have that Dunwich experience yeah take the Dunwich to you yeah exactly and the bottles are very cute and the Pack is cute. What a del- what an amazing gift actually to receive. Yeah, it's packaged by the Dram team, which you know they do a lot of different. Um, they do their own t- actually tasting packs, but also for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, they're really nice guys. But anyway, so this is available at the distillery's website for fifty pounds, and it includes five twenty-five mil samples, from which four are from the Dunwich, and the first one. Or one of them is the the one that we trampled first, so the double cask. And you also get a free Glen Cairn glass and access to a tasting video from Ian, the master distiller. So you really do get the experience. You yeah, know, yeah, you watch the video while you're sampling and stuff. So I think it's I you know, and then you know why he selected these drums. Yeah, it's really nice actually. The last one is Glen Scotia refill bourbon. Then finished in First Fill Ruby Port 2002, 53.8% ABV. So why don't you go first with this one? It's a beautiful rusty amber color and already gives me good vibrations with that color in the glass. Yeah, it's quite bright as well. Like kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. quite like distinct when you see it in the glass, isn't it? I go. I actually was expecting more kind of pungent, immediate notes in the nose, but it took me a wee while. And I was actually getting kind of lovely, gently floral notes, maybe like a summer meadow, and then smooth and creamy mascarpone ice cream, and then sensuous pastries with maybe like some fruit on them. Maybe not like a big stodgy, heavy Danish pastry, but you know, the kind of nice ones you get with like maybe some oh, berries and yeah them. with the dollop of like real vanilla gelato yeah 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 so nice so I found it kind of like gentle and alluring on the nose what about you first I was getting now you need to remind me of this actually the sweets oh god what are they we use them quite often as on whiskey tasting notes I just couldn't remember the name right now are they um chewy sweets yeah kind of chewy like moam or something no. No. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> it maybe will come to me. I can see it. Like, I can see it, but I can't get it. Anyway, it reminds me of these sweets that are very kind of particular taste. And in the bag, they have all these different colors. And only the black ones and the red ones are actually really nice. And the rest of them are kind of weird. So it reminds me of the black and the red ones. <laughs> I can't remember the no, name. No, not wine gums. Wine gums. There you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, like the yellow. I think the yellow or the green ones taste like vomit. I like the yellow and green ones also, but I do agree the black and red are the nice. Yeah, so I was getting the black and the red ones. Wine gums is a really good note for this. That is spot on, actually. And then I was getting. Um, I think it needs to be in the glass a little bit longer. I think because the ABV as well. 
very salted caramel, some hibiscus or like hibiscus tea. Ooh, that's a fancy one. I like that. Yeah. And then uh, you said um, mascarpone and then it hit me, ah, tiramisu. Oh, very nice. Because there's a little bit of that kind of... Yes. Some sort of, Yeah, and maybe a hint of coffee. Really yeah. nice. Very nice. How about the palette for you? So a gentle white pepper spice, the sweetness of beautiful, like organic seeded bread, you know, like warm, freshly baked seeded bread that's sort of a wee bit sweet, but then a wee bit chocolatey, you know, like chocolatey liqueurs you would get at Christmas time. Yeah, definitely. Oh my God. Yeah. I love those as a tasty note because it's you have that amazing so chocolate in the top and there's normally like a little bit of a crunchy bit at the bottom and then yeah that, like whether it's brandy or something like a cherry liqueur or something it just floods its way in mm. yes good call what did you get on the palate well i found it quite juicy like it's quite not red berry notes like diluted berry notes like a you're right. There is a wee bit of a juicy fruit, juicy explosion in yeah. the mouth. Yeah, isn't it? Like whether it's like juice made from cordial and that, di- like that, di- uh, you know, diluted with water, or just kind of carton juice with different berries. But I don't know. I drink loads of berry tea as well, so I'm just getting all these kind of kind of weird tea references all the time. Yeah, it's really nice, and I think. That chocolate, Christmas chocolate, boozy chocolate is a good, good one. Funny how we start using different alcohol as tasting notes. For yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even slight, makes me think of Negroni. The, the finish is almost like the ah. finish that I've just had a couple of sips of Negroni. That's interesting. So maybe like an aftertaste of liqueuriness. Well, yeah, I think, you know, Say like a fruity, you have like a fruitier, heavier, uh, sweet vermouth. Then you've got a tiny bit of that bitterness from the Campari and the, you know, the gin, just whatever. But like, I quite like that. I like it on the finish. I think it's a fairly longish finish. Maybe like sherry soaked sponge from a trifle in the finish or maybe a wee bit of dark chocolate biscuit. Like, you know, the dark chocolate ginger biscuits on the finish? Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Fresh blackberries, like really quite strong ones. Although at the at the start I was saying I was getting summer meadow notes, I find overall it's, although I could sip this at any time of the year, but I mm-hmm. think maybe with the festive season beginning to approach, the colour of the dram, some of the notes coming through, it's a kind of beautiful get you in the mood for the winter season dram yeah. without, without being heavy. Also like a late autumn-y. Yep. I feel like there is some kind of damp leaf stuff or like a, some sort of soil, grassy, soily, wet soiliness as well. Yeah. But like not in a in any way bad way. It's just when you yeah. really start thinking about it. One thing I feel like none of these three had any of that. I quite like when I get um, a Glen Scotia dram that has funky funk funk. Like, yeah, like a really funk funk, like mushroomy funk. Like you're down in the dunnage, there's mushrooms in the corner, there's a damp umbrella funk. Yeah, like, okay, some of these have that kind of that soil and a little bit of those wet leaves. And, you know, you were, we were talking about the wellies and the garden or the compost and things like that. But it's really, you have to kind of nailed. Yeah, so I do miss, I miss that a little bit because I was really excited. Like, oh, but we still have a few drums on, in the pack to try yeah. on our own pace. So maybe it will be there. It sounds like you enjoyed the Ruby Port finish though from your notes. Oh, yeah. I would say that was my favourite of tonight's. Very nice. I am going to say, without shadow of a doubt, the double cask did it for me tonight. I really enjoyed the Ruby Port. Absolutely loved the double cask. Won't really be bothering with the the second dram we tried, but the other two, super juicy. And I think I'm going to buy a bottle of the double cask. Yeah, I think I will as well. Like Treat myself a Christmas dram. Invite a few people over, make some snacks, sip this. Tell them about our day. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them, like, <laughs> what's the better word? More like um, 
brag. <laughs> <laughs> Have yourself a seat. I'm going to pour you a whiskey and then I'm going to make you listen to my awesome whiskey day. Whiskey Sisters, Whiskey Fact. You may have seen the latest release from Glen Shop with an absolutely stunning mermaid design on the bottle. And they took the inspiration from the over three meter high Campbelltown Market Cross. So the Campbelltown Cross is full of fine medieval carvings with Celtic designs and dates back to the 1380s or kind of soon after that. The cross was erected at a church in Kilkeven before being moved to Campbelltown after the Reformation. The cross surface is carved with representations of religious figures, foliage patterns, grotesque beasts, sea monsters and a mermaid. Glen Scotia is planning to release new bottlings based on these designs from the cross, the first being the mermaid. Which I, by the way, tried at our chill hotel and it was amazing. It's about £90 a bottle, but if you can get it, I definitely recommend it. It was beautiful, really, really tasty. It's and really it had- pretty. Yeah, it's really nice design as well. It's um, special artwork they had someone to to do. And that definitely had that kind of funk stuff that I was looking for. Yeah. What makes it extra special is that it was finished in Palo Cortado sherry casks. Jen, are you familiar with your Palo Cortados? No. It's actually a fairly unusual type of sherry. And I've actually never heard of it. So it's super unusual type of sherry and very unusual to be used in whiskey production. Our listeners might be familiar with fino sherry, which is the drier type of light sherry. Fino ages under a floor, which is a, like a whale of yeast, basically. And sometimes by accident, there is no floor. The yeast doesn't appear when they're making fino and that is then re-fortified and aged with air to become another type of sherry, which is Palo Cortado. So it's Ooh. basically a sherry that was happens by accident. Oh, so that's how they Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's how they first discovered it. And like sometimes now they might manufacture it, but it's still very kind of unusual. It's almost as unusual than seeing a mermaid. <gasps> Mythical and magical. You've been listening to the Whiskey Sisters podcast. Okay, next week we will be back and we will be sampling all three of Tomatin's recent Italian collection. Yes, we enjoyed their Portuguese collection in episode 40. So I'm super excited to try this and, you know, Italy anyway. Oh, so we can actually like have a battle. It's, it's yeah. better than Italy. It's better than us. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode and not found us too smug because we are somewhat smug because we had such a fantastic time eventually making it to Campbelltown. The first of hopefully many trips together. Um, you know the score, regular listeners. Please follow us on Instagram. Check out what we're up to on there. Whiskey sisters dot podcast x the new twitter at whiskey sisters and facebook at whiskey sisters podcast get practicing your italian for next episode inca ciao oh. bella arrivederci see you later alligator may your glass be full and your dram on fire and full of glen scotia